Hello everyone. Uh, I just saw this uh, GIF animation uh, of a perpetual motion of a yin yang sign. So today we are going to look at how to create this yin yang sign in 3ds Max. Okay. So first thing you will need is the yin yang sign. Go to images. You will find this, uh, and then you have to save a JPEG file when I saved it it came in as a PNG and it was difficult to trace a PNG so you should save it as a JPEG or convert it to JPEG later on all right now I'm going to go over some unit setup options here if you go to unit setup I have set it to metric centimeters but when you go to system unit setup make sure that one unit is one centimeter as well Otherwise, when you create this plane, right now my plane is 100 by 100. You may end up creating a plane which is way bigger than what you would ideally like. Okay. So that's important. Make sure when you create the plane, it has some tangible dimensions compared to real life. You hit the material key by hitting the M key on the keyboard. We will assign a bitmap and select the Indian sign and assign it to the material and show shaded view in the materials so in the viewport so we can see that Indian sign. Okay, so now we can trace this. I'll move this down in Y axis a little bit and make sure that this X and Y are 0, 0. Now we have to work with precision uh, because of the way those are close to each other and will be rotating along the center. Okay, so precision is important, so we have to place everything at center so we can then rotate and then animate it <coughs> correctly. Let's start with a circle shape here and I'm going to make, keep it a little smaller than the actual size. I will enable it in the viewport and interpolation I will make it adaptive. Okay, so it's perfect circle. Okay, so it's going to be smaller than the actual one so that it can uh, rotate around it without intersecting with each other. The second circle I will simply shift and scale and the thir second circle is going to be a little bigger than the openings <clears throat> and then the sphere will be smaller because when it rotates it goes from here to here so if this is too small if it is perfect then there will be some intersection we don't want that all right so we will select this convert to editable spline and we will attach it to this object so I select this object right click and go to convert to there are many options we are selecting editable spline and then we are selecting the attach option to select the other line so now these two have become one object and now this line will come down here and then we will need some more vertices to trace this and then I right click and use refine the same option is available here all these options are also on this side but right click is a faster way to reach them so I'll move this on this side now the other one is going to be copied so I can rotate and shift rotate it 180 degrees and I'll instance it and then it has to be flipped on the other axis as well 180 degrees Okay, we'll move it aside and then put it in place later. Now let us real quickly 
scale this thing out okay the outer side can be close enough Here it is sharp, so I'll right click and say Bezier corner and then select this and move it. This has to be aligned here. This has to be this I'll place here. Click here so it will move in both axes. And I'll add one more point here. So, where do I need that point? Is the question. So, let us see. You can spend a little bit more time trying to perfect this. I'm going to speed up the process, not waste too much time. Make sure that these so this area is important, maybe smaller is enough gap. But this can be outside. Okay, so now there's enough gap between them. Then I can move this aside now. Okay, good. I'll select these. One is enough. And add an extrude modifier. And give it a thickness. two centimeters is enough we don't want too much thickness otherwise there's intersection problem all right so now material we'll drag a material assign shift double click it get red other one sign material make it blue that's done then we want the spheres so create a sphere it shouldn't be big okay and find material It. All right, so these need to be rotated so that so this is the problem. This has to be perfect so the animation works so if I move this this doesn't move so we will have to we'll add an edit poly modifier on top of this
of it then we will attach this one Attached. The other important thing is the pivot point of each of these have to be at the center because both are going to be rotated from the same origin. All right, so we got to make sure that both are at the center all right <clears throat> now what we need to do is this element has to be here and the other one has to be here all right so now we got this part and we got this part we have to select one of these and rotate it 90 degrees Now we go to perspective view for animating this. So now this that 60 auto key on and now we will rotate it. Here we have to look at it, it has to be 360. 360 and this has to be 360 as well. Okay, so now both are rotating. Now one of them has to be I guess on the in the other axis. Alright, and that's about it. Now what you need to make sure is that the animation doesn't have slow in and slow out. So if you go to turn this off, graph editor, curve editor, this needs to be linear, this needs to be linear, select the other one, same thing, this is linear, this is linear. So they animate. At a constant pace, and then the walls go through. Okay, so that's about it. We can add materials and all, and then render it out. So, if you go to show, say, frame, you can move this out of the way, hide the grid. Shift control and move this to 60. Okay, and now if you play it, you can see you have a perpetual animation. Okay, if you go here, create preview, uh, create preview animation custom range or active time fragment 0 to 60 we render it at 24 frames per second this is good high quality where you want to save the file create it and it's going to create a preview and you can see the preview okay. you can repeat it and now get the perpetual animation 